work basically with type 3 from 3b to 4c when it comes to installing these locks and one of the things i've learned is do not install small sizes why is because especially if you intend to stay with this style for a longer time hi guys welcome back to my channel my name is t if you're new here karibu if you're not thank you so much for coming back again and uh, so today um oh, this is gonna be a brief one i just want us to i want to take us through um everything you need to know about temporary locks before you install and how to take care of your locks once you've installed so the, as a stylist i think i've worked with a lot of hair types and i think there's something or at least a few things I can advise someone on before you. One of the questions I get a lot is number one, first of all, what's the difference between temporary locks? <laughs> what's the difference between temporary locks and artificial locks? Um, really, I would say maybe how they are made because the artificial one tends to look very close to the normal permanent dreadlocks that people install. Um, the temporary one is like this one. I don't know if you can see it. Okay, I will insert a clip How they're made number one and how they're installed how they're installed if you've not watched the video of how these locks are installed please go and please go and find the video and watch it uh yeah so basically the first question is hmm. uh, the difference number one, that's the first one the second one is what size is best Okay, so when people install this, this is a protective style and one of the characteristics of a protective style is that, is that it's supposed to be safe for your hair, that is minimal tension and you should be able to stay with it at least for a longer time and it should be, let's just say, tangle, minimal tangle, tangling, right? And... And one of the things I have learned um, is I've worked basically with type 3 from 3B to 4C when it comes to installing these locks. And one of the things I've learned is do not install small sizes. Why? Is because especially if you intend to stay with this style for a longer time, it's because you see the tension, if the tension for example is there, maybe this is one, let me use this one. And I, I had taken maybe a smaller part of this one. Um, what that would mean would be. Um, okay, so what that would mean would be this tension is here. Okay, uh, and I'll stay with this hairstyle. I've stayed with mine since September last year, 2020. We are in April 2021. So that's September, October, November, December, January, February. <laughs> We are going eight months so that if it's gonna stay here for long you know it's different when the hair is open and you're doing braids or other stuff because when i'm coming to part i can part here next time i part here so the tension is distributed but if you're gonna do it you're gonna do small sizes and stay with it don't stay with it for long then the other thing is it doesn't have to be full head you don't have to have a lot of locks why is because it's a protective style you'll be needing to wash your hair and retouch over the time you're gonna stay with them so you will need the styles to be a bit bigger so that when you retouch it's not as painful how this style is retouched is by interlocking I'm gonna do a video that of that if anyone is interested and how we interlock it uh, what hair types work best with these temporary locks uh, I have personally as a stylist I have installed on both relaxed and natural hair I tend to feel that natural hair benefits more than relaxed hair because I just feel relaxed hair is already fragile because it's already the the protein structure has already been denatured by the chemicals so it tends to be more fragile and in my opinion I think it tends to have more damage so if you are in solid you need to you really need to make sure you're being installed by someone who really is knowledgeable about that. 
how long can I stay with the temporary locks? Um, basically, 11 months or less. That most people always, you know, look for when they're installing this style is to grow out their hair. They want healthy hair, and this is a very good hairstyle because it comes on a budget. You can take care of your hair on a budget. Because, for example, for me, I think I have not had stress of what hairstyle next. Where do I get the money for this? Now the money I get, I invest in hair products, not really on you know the braids and all that. So it's really economical, especially for the amount is it cost and how long it serves you. I think the math really balances. Uh, so the question was, how can you grow out your hair? Will it grow my hair? Yes, it will grow out your hair, but only on a condition if you take care of your hair. Because one thing I've noticed is people who neglect their hair, yes, your hair is gonna grow, but you're not taking care of your hair. So what happens the day we are uninstalling it is that you have so much tangling and you end up having, apart from the shading, you already have shading now and now you have excessive breakage because you weren't moisturizing the hair, so the hair is so tangled. So one of the best ways to take care of your hair in this time is to be doing treatments, be doing deep conditioning, make sure you're using with free shampoo such that your hair is not dry and one of the best ways I have learned is to make maximize on the sprays spray bottles and whatever the content you have on your, in your spray bottle will change the life for example for me this is my spray bottle um, this is from a product I was using sulfur it's I would actually recommend to anyone who has done that because it has salicylic acid it tends to help the scalp shade faster so you don't have the accumulation of product anyway so what my spray bottle has it has lavender essential oil it has peppermint essential oil it has water and it has a bit of this of the this spray so this is this is the spray i keep telling all my clients once i they install this to make sure they buy but it's not a must because you can alternate uh, personally i don't find it i find using this one every day to be very like tiresome or to my scalp because I tend to feel my scalp can't breathe because it has a lot of glycerin. Glycerin is the second ingredient of this one, and so I tend to feel like I have a lot of product build up, so I don't use it alone, I mix it, and also I find the smell to be too strong, so I personally cannot use it alone. So I make sure you spray this every day. And this is the good thing about this one is that water is the first source of your moisture. And this, the base ingredient here, the majority of the ingredient here is water. So the essential oils are just supposed to give the, the, the hair a boost. For example, peppermint is, um, stimulates hair growth, is relaxing to the scalp, it's soothing. Lavender oil, on the other hand, is antibacterial, anti, you know, use of resorted, anti-fungal, all of those. Basically, it's like antimicrobial. Uh, so it actually helps and lavender kind of smells nice if you ask me yeah um, so what I do you make sure you spray this every single day if you can in the morning and at night now another tip if you if you if you're not gonna get this one I would suggest adding glycerin to the water just a few a few drops or just one tablespoon or two tablespoons um, why is because glycerin acts as a humectant what a humectant does is Glycerin or honey, you actually get that honey. I know most people say like, "Ay, funny bees won't come flying on my on my head." No, they won't. You add them just a little bit, and then it's mixed with water, so it's not as potent. Because again, if you use honey or glycerin alone on the hair, like just smearing, applying, it's gonna dry your hair. So what a humectant does is that it draws moisture from the environment and the things around it to your hair. Right? So don't use glycerin alone because it's going to dry your hair. Now it's going to pull the moisture from your hair out, outside. Uh, so that's the other thing. You can grow your hair, but you need to make sure you are taking care of your hair while you are rocking this hairstyle. Another way is to make sure you treat your hair. You can still continue with your normal treatments. However, I would advise don't use very, very thick treatments. Why? It's because I find they tend to um, be left on the locks. Because remember, this lock is a bit porous, so they tend to be left on the lock. Um, conditioner, normally I would say you can come up with your, you know, make your own deep conditioners. Don't stay with a conditioner for more than 30 minutes, of course, because your hair is going to suffer hydro fatigue. That's too much moisture. Um, so, 
mix conditioner with maybe a nice oil maybe avocado oil coconut oil peppermint now assuming you have you have relaxed hair um i would say work with and you've installed the locks i'd say work with coconut oil and olive olive is very moisturizing coconut helps the hair to bind to protein so assuming you're using a nice protein i personally use on myself and my client um the con the treatment it's called black like me so i think i can insert a photo somewhere yes um that's the conditioner i use on the treatment i use on myself and my clients the conditioner i use is tresemme i kind of enjoy it because when i had op open hair it was working for me and it still is working for me but most of the time i wouldn't use conditioner i would use treatments um then the other thing is can i use a leave-in conditioner yes you can actually do not use a uh, rinse out conditioner in this spray bottle. The people who prefer, I find they add conditioner here. Yeah, no, don't because it's too heavy. It's meant to be rinsed out. So you're, it's like you're draining your hair. So I would say you can use a leave-in conditioner, mix it here and continue spraying. However, that would be really best for people who have dry scalp, you know, and all that. Because for people like us, me, who have oily scalp, it becomes too much product. So we start getting much more. Uh, basically, I, I hope I've answered all the questions. Retouch. How after? How often should I retouch? How often you retouch depends on how fast your hair grows and how neat you like your hair. For example, I personally do not like very neat hair, so my retouch is at least once a month. My hair grows, let's say, averagely normal, not so fast, not so slow. So. I don't really mind and again one thing i've noticed the more often you wash i think the messy it becomes because i think there's that abrasion where you are you know massaging the scalp and all that um so i would say once a month or once in two months or the people who really whose hair really grows fast especially people with looser hair texture i think it tends to become messier even i think because there's a way it slides the 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 lock kind of slides so you will need to be retouching often now another question i keep i get a lot is um how come the, the when the, the hair is growing it tends to look a bit thinner at the um the base now let me look for a good example i don't know if this one is clear uh -huh. so assuming this one i don't know if you can see the density the thickness here is a bit thin here till somewhere here and then it gets thin, thicker. Now this is where we've been retouching this. The whole of this, I think, is growth. Remember the hair was folded, so this part will be retouching. So it tends, sometimes it tends to appear thinner, especially if the lock was thicker than the hair. Uh, why? It's because you see, as we're interlocking, 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 what do I call? Like crochet, you're, you're locking inside. What it does is that it grips the hair really tightly, so it becomes neater. Yeah, so that's one so that's really the difference it doesn't mean that your hair is malnourished or anything like that this uh, is my favorite one is how to take care so how do you take care of this hair um i have some things here that i do use um this is the lock spray this is a shampoo this is a sulfate free shampoo i personally use okay, ashanti um and vertica my co-wash when i need co-wash however co-wash really does not work for me per se i find it too coating and my scalp is the oily dandruff prone scalp so it becomes my scalp becomes really itchy so how do you take care of it first invest in a nice shampoo most especially a sulfate free shampoo this is a protective style you're trying to grow out your hair you're trying to have minimal styling and manipulation on your hair so that you keep your hair brick a brick to grow so one of the shampoos you i would recommend is the Hello, Asante, ashanti naturals why is because i think this bottle is very economical i think i bought it at around 500 i'm not very sure at chandarana food plus and it's lasted me since before i installed the lock still now i think i bought it around during, during, hey, during lockdown somewhere in april so it's, it's really lasted and since I intend to uninstall the locks, I think I can have like one for two washes. So it's still very, it's economical. Compared to guys, before I forget, I think one of the ways I have learned you can maximize on having moisture on your hair is like 
maximizing on um, allowing your hair to have moisture is investing in a satin bonnet when you're sleeping however sometimes i find it's too hot i cannot sleep in this thing so what i have invested in is the satin pillowcases you know Certain pillowcases are like my best friend because first of all, hakuna joto, number one. Number two, they are, I don't know, it doesn't come out at night because it's the pillow. Now that is very um, okay if you use pillow. If you don't use pillow, I know of bed covers. There are suppliers of bed covers, of certain bed covers. In case you're interested in where I purchased this one, please go back to my Instagram and dm me i'm gonna you know, give you a report on how to get it so this is one of the nice ways you can maximize on growing on growing your hair basically whether you have locks or not this is a good investment but you can see i have so many so, <laughs> so basically that's it i unless you have any questions i'll be more than willing to answer in case you are interested in um installing this hair in Kenya, Nairobi, Kenya, or Arusha. In Nairobi, Kenya, uh, go to my Instagram. My Instagram handle is Nauray Atara and Nauray underscore Atara. You can DM me and we can discuss that.